Hey up YouTubers, Simon B here, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all keeping safe out there. In the garage today, doing some maintenance on the uh, KTM. There'll be some people out there that, that say that these KTMs need a lot of maintenance and that's why they won't own one. Now, it's only the sort of maintenance you should be doing on a bike that you're gonna be riding off road every week, twice a week, etc. We're not racing this thing, so we don't need to do it as much as what the manual says, but there is things that need doing onto it. I've had this bike since last May, and we've done all sorts on it. We changed the, the oil regular. This week, I'm gonna change the bearings on this KTM, the back wheel. Now, this is gonna be very similar to any other motorbike that's available around, it's not just on this KTM. So, if you fancy knowing how to change the wheel bearings on your motorcycle, as they say, stick around and stay tuned. Like, like and subscribe. And subscribe. First thing you need to do before you can change the bearings is you need the wheel off the bike. Now, I'll film this, I'm not gonna show you how to do it. It's just a nut, pull the pin out, it's dead easy, so I'm not gonna tell you how to suck eggs, but we'll just film it and we'll go through it and then we'll take the wheel off. All right, and fast forward it. See you in a bit. So I've got the um, wheel off, as you said, we just did a bit of a fast section and now we've um, got the wheel on the bench so what we're going to do we need to take the spacers out each side there's a spacer each side um, once we take the spacers out sometimes they come out as easy as that and sometimes they don't so take both spacers out the next thing we need to do is take the seals out so these seals are there to protect everything and one of the easiest ways is I have um, some tools like this which um, allows me to um, take them out you can get seal pullers you can use a screwdriver just make sure you get into the right into the back of it and then it's just a push up and pull like that and that's all it is really um, it's a bit cruddy in there now one side of this um, of this wheel has uh, a circlip and this is the side that we've just opened um, that has the circlip so what we need to do is to remove that circlip before we can tap any um, seals out so sometimes circlips can be a pain Ooh. Something like that could be. So sometimes if it doesn't come out, what's happened is the bearing slightly come up a bit. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna give that a bit of a, a tap back. And see if that'll loosen the um, circlip, which it probably should do. No, it hasn't, really. <laughs> uh, should have done this video on the front one, shouldn't I? There we go, there's one side out. Just give the circle a tap. One side's come, but the other side hasn't. Which is a pain. screwdriver behind it and see if we could tease it out there we go it's nearly there we go it's nearly out nearly out see this is some of the main maintenance jobs on these bikes because you're running through um water mud and everything and sometimes the seals aren't the best there we go there she goes and um You get into this position with when you're trying to get the um, the bearing out and it doesn't want to because the circlip's rusted in, which is not very good. 
So yeah, when you're riding these off-road quite a bit, you need to be doing a bit of maintenance with them and look, just looking after them, sort of just making sure everything's all right, everything's running okay, everything's doing what it should do. You know, you can put grease in these, but they can still get um, they can still get full of um, water, and then they end up rusting, which is um, a bit of a pain so there's a tube inside there and I don't think you'll be able to see you'll probably just see there the difference in colour so that basically keeps the inner race together on both sides and because these bearings are pressed in together it's quite tight to try and get um, to try and find a lip to start banging these out so we need to just um, adjust the inside, which sometimes can be easy, sometimes it can't be. Um, I don't know if anybody's seen these. I got this, I saw a couple of videos on them. Um, <coughs> I don't know if anybody's seen these, these lights. Um, I seen them on, um, what was it, Facebook? No, no, YouTube, I think. Um, Nothing worse of working somewhere where you can't see, but your light is right above your head, right in front of your eyes. So you don't have to try and get a, something stuck up somewhere and, and um, a tail light straight on you. Um, I can't remember how much it was, it's probably about 15 quid. Rechargeable, it's great. If I can f remember where I got them from, I'll put a link down below. It's not, I paid for it myself, nobody sent it me, I'm not endorsing it and think it's great, but. Um, great when you're working on your bikes and you can't see and you know stuff's right in front of your eyes which is good yeah. so I've just knocked that back that middle tube which I'll show you the tube when we get it out which has allowed me to have a bit of a step on this bearing So hopefully now there we go. It's just you can see now there, and it's just come a little bit loose, which is now allowing me to get my bar in. Hopefully, loosen and break this. Bearing, which, there we go. As you can see now, the bearing is now come on. What you need to do as you tap it out, don't just. What exactly is happening is that's inside onto that there. And you need to be going from side to side and bring it out square if you try and do it from one side it'll turn and it'll damage your whole hub and as you can see now the internal um, tube is now loose so all i just need to do is um there's a bit of room there to allow this bearing and you can you can feel it as it goes through so that's the bearing now dropped out there's the um that's what's in the, in the middle of it which you need to pull away and as you tighten up your spindle bolt this rests on the inside it's the same size as the inside race of um the bearing so it stop basically stops the bearing from collapsing that's what that's for so if you don't have one of them in as you tighten that up, that bearing would wear on one side and then it just ends up collapsing. So that's what your tube inside's for. Um, quite rusty, quite, well it's not rusty because it's aluminium or it's some sort of alloy. Probably aluminium I would say. Yeah it is. Um, so don't forget to put that back in. So we'll get that cleaned in a minute. The, um, yeah. Can you hear that? That bearing 
is on its way out. So we're about good timing of um, changing these. So now we have no issues of getting out the other side out now. There is, um, you can get bearing pullers. I have a bearing puller kit, but for some reason the bearing puller kit doesn't, um, is not big enough for that. So it must be a different size to me WRF. But um, usually I would use the, um, which I did have it before, to knock these bearings out, um, a punch. But the problem is the hub's that, that long on the back wheel. <laughs> There's not much sticking out, so um, half inch, um, half inch extension bar. You're not damaging it a great lot because you're not hitting it so much because it's only it's only steel out of a bit of an aluminium uh, hub. You can warm them up; they sometimes come out a little bit easier. Um, but because they're an interference fit, you don't really need to. But you can if you want. There's no ifs and buts and yes and nos, but you can. And some people put their bearings in the freezer, which actually makes them smaller and, and put them in after. But I've never really had a problem with that. If I was doing, if I was doing a, a big bearing on um, on the car or the van or something like that, then fair enough. Yeah, put the bearing in the um, in the freezer. But um, on something like this, it's 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 minimal. So we'll get the other side out. side comes out dead easy and the other side is um, okay, then feel it moving oh, I need a bit of warmth on this one mm, she's not moving at all I did bring the door lamp anyway. So I know he needs a bit of a heat. We're not um, we're not warming up to cherry red or <laughs> anything like that. So You can use a heat gun if you want. Probably safer with a heat gun. Yeah, this was a side that was more rusty, so um, I'll just see if this, if that will help. A bit of luck. You can feel it moving. Over there now, up the thing. Yeah, she's nearly out. There she is. The whole is. Seems to have um, some sort of rub rubber washer on the inside for some reason. I have no idea why. What's all that about? Oh dear me. Jesus, so oh, they are. Um... <laughs> you hear that? That is terrible. That's what we've just taken out. <laughs> That's what we're putting back in. So yeah, they were ready. The front one, the front ones were bad, as bad as these. Um, they're terrible, absolutely terrible. Yeah, 
There's a certain amount of grease that you can put on this stuff. Um, it's like your chain. You put a lot of grease on your chain, if you're in dry conditions, it's all it's going to do is attract dirt and make it even worse. So, there's a moderation, but if this inside, the more um, probably grease there is, the, um, the less it's going to rust and stuff, you know what I mean? But Sometimes too much, too much grease can damage things more than not enough. So there's a bit of a GT85 there into, uh, to, to um, help it into um, the hub. The, come on, focus, there we go. The bearing itself has two um, chamfered edges, so it doesn't really matter which way it goes in. Some bearings only have um, a chamfer on one side, so they're only going one side, but these have two, and I think they have them all on the KTM. Um, what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to warm that just slightly, just how easy that other one came out, to make it easy for myself. And um, just goes in a little bit easier. And it's amazing, you know, you're, with the interference fit, you're probably only talking about a thou, thou and a half difference. But by heating it, it will give you that nearly foul and um, help it just slide in and stop you from damaging the sides and damaging everything. So it just makes just makes a difference. It's only it's not so warm in this garage at the moment, so yeah, we will just um, you know, not so we're not taking it to cherry red or anything. Put a GT85 on it. And um, <laughs> even better. See that won't go in before, and we're, so we just heated that in. And that's just falling in. Weird, isn't it? Weird, weird. Sir clips. Bloody eight sir clips. So while you're putting your sir clip in, just make sure that it um, seats in properly. You could have two sides in, this side in, but then the other side, as you saw, it didn't actually go in. So, it's all in now. I did I did the front the other day and I, <laughs> I put the bear in and I forgot to put that in. So don't, don't forget, that needs to go in before you put this bearing in on this side. Because if you don't, you'll only have to knock the bearing out again. The part number for the bearings is there. Um, I think somebody tells me that it's the same. If you've got standard KTM wheels, it's the same bearings all the way from something like an 06 all the way up to the 22 uh, range. So they all fit, they're all the same. So before we'll put that in, I think we'll heat this side as well. We'll just warm this side up and see if it'll um, drop in like the other side. So I say, just a bit of a warm. Nothing um, massive, nothing um, too much. do is just to use my punch on, um, on the outside rim once it gets inside the hub you can um, there you go you can just spin it round and round just like that and um, put it in if you haven't got you know, that's just too slack. That's a so that's in as far as it'll go. I've no idea why that was um, had a washer on side of it. I think for some reason I don't know. So what I don't need to do now is put the um, the seals in it. The easiest way to put these seals in now is to um, use an old bearing because it's basically the same size. So what I'm going to do just a bit of um, multi-purpose. Um, 
thought you were faster at um, focusing on that. Um, just a bit of multi-purpose grease. I'm just going to put that on the inside of the um, of the bearing. Still a bit warm, is that? That's why it's melting. I'm melting. So yeah, um, there's an outer and an inner. Might better see. Can we focus? That's the inside. And that's the outside. Okay, so don't put it on the wrong way. Um, you can lube it up just a slight little bit. So some of these will actually just push in by hand. Really, you don't need a lot of force to put them in. So just, um, just make sure Make sure they're going nice and square. And a little bit of grease inside, just between on the, on the underside of the um, seal, underside of the seal, and um, the top of the bearing. And it'll just keep it, um, hopefully, rust-free. So we'll do the same on this side, and that'll nearly push on by hand. Some kits you can buy, you can buy these um, spacers separate. If they're um, pitted and damaged and stuff like that, you can buy them and uh, replace them. These are okay at the moment. You can get all different coloured ones, ironised ones and things like that. But these fit into the bearing and um, onto the shoulder of the bearing and onto the inner race. So the whole thing's clamped up. So just before you um, put them back in, just give them a little bit of a grease up. Internally and externally. Yeah, if you're riding off road, if you were if you were racing, you'd be taking this to bits nearly every race and greasing all this stuff up because you know it's detrimental. But um, if you're green laning, I don't know what what do you think. Um, to be honest with you, I think I should probably should have looked at it beforehand. We did grease this when we put a new tire on the back and put a moose in the back. This thing should fly. So that's it all back in, and now all it needs to do is go back on the bike. I won't show you how to do it, but what I will do, I will film it and I'll fast forward it and show you how easy it is to do. It's relatively easy, what have we used here? We've used a bit of a pry bar, we've used a small hammer, we've used a set of circlip pliers, um, a bit of grease and a half inch, half inch extension. That's the only tools that we've got, you know, you don't need thousands and thousands of pounds worth of tools um so yeah you you can also do this at home um but yeah it's dead easy so you can do this at home <music>